Hey, Takeover Church, thank you so much for checking out today's message, whether it's on podcast or on YouTube. We are so grateful that you are here. We pray it blesses you and encourages you and that you will like, share, and subscribe across all Takeover platforms. We look forward to seeing you on Sunday. God bless. We love you guys.
weapon a melody this morning, everybody. Yes. yes. Yes, that is so good. So pumped. During Team Rally, Scott had us shout a battle cry, and that is exactly what we just did yeah. right there. I don't know about y'all, but I like have two angels on either side of me, so right there between Mel and Shani, the voices are just perfect. It's like being in heaven. All right, so this morning, communion, it can be kind of a somber time where we talk about what Christ has done in remembrance, and I want it to be a time of power. Coming out from that song, it is it is a time of remembrance of what Christ did for us. But it's not sad. It can be sad when we think about it, of, of the sacrifice that he made, but so glad in the sacrifice that was made for us and what that means for us. Yeah. New life in him. The chains have fallen away. There is freedom. The keys to death have been taken back. Yeah. Come on.
there's more people that need to be healed right here, right now. Um, your knee hurts. Your shoulder hurts. Does anybody else have any any pain? Somebody uh, maybe a pain in their side, maybe a pain here. Put your hand on somebody. Put your hand on these people. If somebody's got their hand up. Can you just can you just put your hand on them real quick? Don't be afraid. Thank you. 
are made well right now. Praise God for taking that. Praise God for giving that to you right now. You're made whole. Pray for, uh, for, for peace. Pray for Logan. He's made completely well as well um, in the hospital room. Jesus, you would just rest your Holy Spirit upon him right now. And we pray for uh, this person's aunt. She is a uh, lost her best friend. Just pray for peace with her, supernatural peace. Lord, you would just come and comfort her like never before. Lord, we send your Holy Spirit, we send your, your angels to just go and comfort her and hold her and, and take her up, Lord. So on the other side of, of praise, our prayer is praise. And that's what, that's why we pray in the first place. We don't, we don't say, hey, if it's your will, please do this, please do that. Well, so this Bible says what your will is. We're going to call it down from heaven until we see it. So I uh, got to pray for my mom. She was walking out of the, her bedroom, and my dad was holding her and carrying her because she had vertigo. Some days it just wipes her out. Her entire day is gone. Um, and my dad said, I prayed for her, and it got a little better. Was well, that you need to pray for her. So I got to pray for her. And she was completely made whole right there. With her grandkids, she was just on, on, on 10. She was just 100%. This is coming from a, from a family who uh, is really trying to grasp that Jesus still heals people. And the fact that he got to do that in my house through me is so baller. Uh, this one says, Sarah's twins that were born premature are doing really good. And now they're finally taking in their milk. Okay. And one more. Um, new job is going well. Two opportunities to share Jesus with strangers. Uh, so, uh, praise God. Um, we will be praying for more healing in the back after service. I'll hit that in, uh, in uh, church news. Yes, everybody, you can have a seat. Take a seat, take a seat. If you have littles, they can now go with Miss Shandy, this good-looking Australian right here, and our little Latin mama, Natalia, out that way. Guys, that was so good. Was that not insane? Okay, can you guys just, like, make a noise for our worship? And Zachy, that was an awesome prayer. I am, I am so touched and so moved by... Um, when people, like when you lay your hands on somebody that needed healing, you don't even know what they need. But my hand was up and people were putting their hands on me and like you, you putting your hand on another person is a declaration of your faith and your belief that that healing is going to happen whether you understand it or not. Which to me is just incredible. It's insane. I love this tribe. It's good, yeah. right? Yeah? Come on. Yeah. Alright, so we're offering this morning. I wanted to read very briefly out of First Timothy. Uh, this week at team night, we had, I mean, we have people who are always going through things, but there was somebody in particular who had gone through something really rough that day, and the Holy Spirit during team night during prayer was like, you're going to pay for the bill, the medical bill that they just got. And I was like, I didn't hear that. <laughs> I don't know, Lord. Um, I'll think about it. And he was like, no, no, you're, you're going to pay their bill. And, and it wasn't even like... It was like the first time where I kind of talked back a little, but it wasn't even like really that second time where I was like, okay, Lord, I know that this is what you want me to do. I'm just being silly and fussing with you a little bit. I'm, I'm, we're going to pay that bill. And, and we did. And I'll tell you that that comes out of a place of being so grateful myself for everything that I have. Like, that might be a big chunk of my check that week, but for me, I'm so content in what the Lord has provided, I know that I'm going to be fine. And I know that what I'm going to give is going to be more to that family than it is sitting in my own bank account. You know what I mean? Yeah. And this isn't to ups me, okay? The Holy Spirit told me to do it, and I was like, hang on a second. And, and then I, I did do it. So it's more on the Holy Spirit and, and Him knowing far more than we do of the needs of those around us. Yeah, and also, there's
nurturing my heart in gratitude and growing my heart in gratitude. In 1 Timothy 6, it says, Yet true godliness with contentment is itself great wealth. After all, we brought nothing with us when we came into the world, and we can't take anything with us when we leave it. So if we have enough food and clothing, let us be content. But people who long to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many foolish and harmful, harmful desires that plunge them into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, and some people craving money have wandered from the true faith and pierced themselves with many sorrows. And I love that first. Yet true godliness with contentment is itself great wealth. Great wealth. This has been a challenging time. COVID has been rough. A lot of people have struggled with work and with finances. And, and I'm just telling you that as my prayer over you this morning is for God to grow us in contentment. Does that sound good? All right. I'm going to pray, and then on the screen you can see there's three ways to give. If you want to give in person, you can get back there. Jesus, thank you so much, Father God, first and foremost, for everything that you've already done beyond the sacrifice on the cross. Jesus, you, you paid for us to live prosperous lives and prosperous lives. We do live. Father, we are so grateful. We just pray for that contented heart to grow inside of us. We know that the Bible says that the world is generous and grows larger and larger. We just pray for those opportunities this week to reach out and bless those around us. In Jesus' mighty name, and everyone said, Amen. Amen. All right. Put your hands together for Scott and Zach as they come up this morning for Church News. Go. Uh, okay. All right. All right. I feel that. If you have one that. chance, one opportunity to claim everything you ever wanted, Scott, would you take it or would you let it slip? What's up, guys? This is uh, Church News. Hey, how, how great has service been so far? It's my lip. It's my lip. Yeah. As, uh, as the young guys say, it's my lip. Um, welcome, welcome to church. We're super pumped. Uh, Zach. Let's get them started with some church news. Let's get them started. We got, guys, uh, we, got, we got some life crews. If you like us, follow us. Follow us, yeah, absolutely. Follow us on all social media platforms. Shameless plug. So you can plug everything. Hit us with that, man. Life crews happen every other Wednesday. If you're not in a crew, get in a crew. It is one of the best nights of the week. Uh, you know, right now we have uh, the boys crew and the babes crew. Um, you know, we kind of, the, the guys will go do something cool, light something on fire, talk about Jesus, it's pretty sweet. The, the ladies go do other crappy stuff and hang out and talk about Jesus. And, uh, yeah. all right. it's great. You guys do some cool stuff. I, don't, I mean, I don't know the intricate details because I'm not there, but it's I cool. wish I was in a most of the time. Yeah, you guys, yeah, you guys do some worship yeah. stuff, it's pretty cool. So, if you're, yeah, honestly, we need some guys to step up with some worship stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But if you're not in a crew, get in a crew because it's awesome. We just, we dig into the word, we get into each other's lives and just make sure that nobody is doing life alone and that everybody is, is kind of, you know, held accountable and following where they need to be going. It's, it's awesome. Yeah. It's awesome. And another crew that we have is Porn Free, which is a group that I'm leading up. Uh, so 7% of churches in America have a group to help men and women in, in, uh, in church to get free from porn. And 65% of men struggle with it. Not just any men, men in the church struggle with that. And 7% uh, of churches are doing something about it. We want to be one of the churches who's talking about it, who is building each other through it. see what the Bible says and uh, we look up to leaders who uh, have been here before and um, so if you would like to be in that talk to me message me on Facebook or uh, put, sign it up in a welcome home card and uh, it's so dope yeah we'll, we'll get it done if you have a sign for that also we have a Bible study that happens uh, I believe it's every Friday night at 630 still is that correct awesome it's, uh, it's uh, CJ my main man CJ in the back everybody uh, we got CJ we Single man. He's, uh, he's, got a really, he's got a really cute smile underneath that mask. Yes, yes. Uh, if you're interested in, in getting in this Bible study, uh, talk to CJ. Um, just It's a great opportunity to dive into the Word and really understand uh, you know, what is written there and what the Lord has to say through His written Word. It's an awesome opportunity. Also, we have serve crew. These are the people who put church on, and whether it's waving a sign, putting, setting the chairs up, tearing the chairs down, uh, worship crew, kids crew, uh, sound people, whatever it might be.
might be if you feel like you have a gifting in one of these areas and feel called to serve, please do. We want more and more people to serve. Um, and we need more people on host group to, to come. And you know, it's a great place to start until maybe you find you have a gifting in music or whatever it might be. Yeah. Uh, but we'd love to have you. God calls to serve. So sign in the welcome home card. Yeah. Let's get it going. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And uh, also today we have another giveaway. I'm just wearing this now so I can surprise you with books. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Anyways, we have a book giveaway today, alright? It is Jesus is Blank by Judas Smith. Uh, as Matt will tell you, it's his second favorite book behind the Bible. So That's true. apparently it's pretty good. You should read it. Yeah. Say so, Matt's bird for it. So <laughs> um, you know, usually uh, I just kind of give it away. I'll ask. You know, is there anybody specific that really feels like they want this book? Topher? Oh, Topher, Topher, you want that book? We have a lot of resources like that. You know, if you feel like you really want to dive into it to really understand some, some things about you know Jesus and who he is and who he, he has called you to be, let us know because we have resources that we can hook you up with that kind of stuff. A new slide for me. That's oh, cool. for everybody. Slide. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, uh, this, this, I, I keep forgetting to say it, but yo, know, I'm praying for people in the back. You can ask anybody to pray for you, uh, but I'm specifically praying uh, for for healing. Yo, know, if you still have that thing that's going on, it's going to be gone if, if we can come and lay hands on it. I, we fully believe in the healing power of Jesus Christ in this church, and we have testimonies, our uh, testimonies, and people who are here to, to share what happened to them, if you want them to, that it's real too. So I have no no reason to argue with anybody. It's just like Bible and talk to this person. It's real. Like, let's, let's, so yeah, let's, uh, let's pray after service. Last but not least, let's give it up oh, for man, the man who on. makes this thing come on. For the man, the, the anointed man who brings the word to us every week. Let's give it up for my main man, Matt McClure. It's a, lot to, it's a lot to live up to, yeah, isn't, yeah. It? isn't it? Good morning, take over church. How are we doing? Woo! Fantastic. Yo, what an incredible morning we've had in church so far. Amen, amen. Yeah. Yo, I don't know about you, but if you are not hyped, if you are not lit up with the Holy Spirit this morning, we, we said this morning you're a team rally and we posted online, I think, too, but we are going to have church no matter who's here, no matter who, how many come. Come one, come all. Holy Spirit about to fall, and that's exactly what happened yeah. this morning. Did you feel it? Come on. If he's done anything for you, if God has put air in your lungs, if he's blessed you, he will this week, please break right now. And if you're new with us this morning, I hope one thing is evident. Not that, you know, the pastor wears too tight of pants. I hope one thing is evident that you know that we truly are a people that believe the word yes. of God. Yes. And because we do, we are going to stand with you audaciously. We're going to believe for the mighty, for the big, for the crazy, yes. for the wild. And we are not going to accept hell's no for an answer, but we're going to take heaven's yes every single yes. time. Amen. Amen. Uh, but it's good. But this morning, yes, uh, if I had a chance to meet you, I'm um, one of the lead pastors alongside my beautiful wife, Adrienne. My name's Matt, and uh, it's an honor and privilege to uh, lead this church, and I hope today that we just see what God does, amen. He is going to He is gonna tear us up from the floor up, amen. Yeah. So this morning, we are continuing our series. I'm sick of the lightning. What is that? What is that? I'm going to stay away from you. Anyways, this happened one time. We thought somebody was moving things around. I don't know what was going on. Um, it's the bass amp. How did that come? It's not a bass amp. Kill it. Sure. Yeah. What about this? Huh? There. Whoa! Bass amp! Yeah! I said that three weeks ago. I said that three weeks ago. But they don't care about 
Anyways, I'm joking. I'm just picking on CJ. He's one of my favorite people. But this morning, we are continuing our series, This Is War. And if you've been with us for any length of time in the series, you know what that means. Say it with your chest. This is war. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Woo! Who's taking notes? Where my note takers at? Let's go. Come on. One of my favorite phrases is this. The, uh, I think it's from Billy Graham that if your Bible is falling apart, chances are your soul is not. I want to revamp that and just say the, the more notes you take, the better it is for your soul. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. So let's get it this morning. See if your hand can keep up with my mouth. Amen. Amen. We'll try because I am espresso elated. I feel like we just went super saint this morning. Not even super saint, super saint. Yeah. And uh, it was a whole other level. So I hope I don't with it. Um, but if you're taking notes, Title of my message for week seven of This Is War. I think it's seven, or it could be six. What was my thing say? Six? Sorry. Yeah. Uh, I had it written down because I forget every time. We'll get to week 42 in February. You'll be really excited. Woo! Um, so let's have a message is this. You ready? Yeah. Come on. World War Me. Whoa. World <laughs> War Me. Would you just turn and tell your neighbor as soon as you're done taking your note? I got a war inside of me. I got a war inside of me. Come on, somebody. Are you ready for the Bible this morning? Come on. Who loves their B-I-B-L-E? Am I right? I didn't even grow up. In, yeah, there you go. Somebody did. I didn't even grow up in church. That was awesome. All right. Here we go. Romans 7, 18 through 25. Real quick, Apostle Paul, tell us what's up. And I know that nothing good lives in me. Fantastic. Isn't that just great news this morning? And I know that nothing good lives in me. Thank you, Paul. That is oh, in my sinful nature. Thank you for clarifying. I want to do what is right, but I can't. Some of us quit reading the right after that verse. We're like, oh, no, Christianity. Um, nothing is good to me. Yeah. Anyways, but I can't. I want to do what is good, but I don't. I don't want to do what is wrong, but I do anyway. But if I do what I don't want to do, I'm not really the one doing the wrong. It is the sin that is living in me, in me that does it. I have discovered the principles of life that when I want to do what is right, I inevitably do what is wrong. I love God's law with all my heart, but there is another power within me that is at war within my mind. This power makes me a slave to sin that is still within me. Oh, what a miserable person I am. Again, Paul, you're so great. Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? Thank God the answer is Jesus Christ our Amen. Lord. Jesus Christ our Lord, if you know it's funny. So you see how it is in my mind. I really want to obey God's law, but because of my sinful nature, I am a slave to sin. We're going to pray, we're going to be honest, and we're going to let the Holy Spirit just change us from the inside out. Does that sound good? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Father God, we just thank you so much for this morning. Oh, what an incredible time in worship, God. God, I just thank you so much that you are here, that you are not a far off God, that your word says we're two or more are gathered. There's a lot more than two people in here this morning. Praise God. You are here in our presence, God. And where your presence is, we are a people that believe there. Your power goes, Father God. So we thank you that your presence is here, that your power is here, that you are with us in this room this morning, God. Change us from the inside out. Reshape us, mold us, make us pliable. Make us look like your son Jesus today, God. We're not interested in leading looking like Matt McClure. I'm interested in leading looking like Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. So Father, come and have your way in and through this space and in the hearts and minds of the people here. In Jesus' mighty name, faith, though, church, that. Amen. Amen. World War Me. So here's the Apostle Paul. If you don't know, now you know. And this is probably, I think you'd agree, the most relatable portion of Scripture of all time. Amen. Yeah. Like you read this and you're just like, I've been there. I've been there. That's me right now. But before we dig into that, I think it's appropriate to pause because I want to challenge everybody in this room a little bit. Now, I understand that as a preacher, that as a communicator, that as someone who, this is what I do, this is what my calling is, I understand that one of the ways, this is particularly how I love to lead, I am not a person that is going to sit up here and tell you a bunch of things that I don't believe in, that I've never seen happen, that I don't truly and not fully persuaded and completely convinced that God cannot do, and I'm just going to tell you all about my failures so you identify with them. No, no. I will lead from my failures failures because it's an easier place for you to identify with, but we will preach from a place of victory. Amen. Amen. I will leave this morning. This is so well known as far as leadership and all this other mumbo jumbo goes. 
that people are like, oh man, people, people uh, identify with failure more than they do your victories. And I challenge that by saying, yes, I agree with that. But I don't believe as a Christian you are called to simply just commiserate with misery. I believe that you are called to be a champion that wins championships, to be a victor that has victories. And I believe this morning that with the right heart and the right spirit and the right mindset, you can receive a word of victory from the Lord today. You don't got to identify with my failure or what Paul was going through, you can prepare the soil of your heart for heaven's reign of victory all over your life. Amen? Amen. Is anybody ready for victory on the inside? Amen. I am sick and tired of watching Christians live defeated. Yeah. Yeah. It makes no sense. I reject the spirit of defeat that's in this house right now. My heart is trembling, which usually means I'm on to something. But I reject a spirit of defeatedness in this house. We will not be a defeated people. Yeah. Trust me, on the other side of this scripture, we're going to break this down. There is some good news, even though I realize that Paul starts off professing there is nothing good in him. Right. But we're going to have victory. Amen. Yeah. Amen. We do not commiserate with misery. Right. Yeah. We do not. It's not for the Christian. So here, Paul, the Apostle Paul, if you're not familiar, I'll break it down real quick. The Apostle Paul, he's the man, he kind of has like this thing that he is saying right here that is probably one of the most relatable pieces of scripture simply because we've all been there as Christians. And so Paul, he is a guy, if you don't know, I know a lot of us, we haven't had this kind of life, but I have lived a life and seen a lot and done a lot before I met Jesus, okay? And much like Paul, Paul has come out of a place where he used to be known as a guy named Saul, and he was basically a hired gun for Jewish law. He was literally commissioned to go and persecute and kill Christians. He had a license to kill. He's not James Bond, but he had a license to kill. That is who Paul is. And so Paul, he's coming from this wild life before this, and he's writing to the Romans, the church in Rome, which how many of you know, Rome back in the day, if you've ever seen a sword and sandal movie, Ben-Hur, right. hopefully not the remake, Gladiator, all sorts of stuff, Spartacus, don't watch that. Like, if you've seen any sword and sandal movie, you know, or had, like, paid attention to history class, which I did, and I'll show you my transcript, my wife will actually, because uh, she likes to show people my transcripts. That's been <laughs> and uh, if you've ever known anything about this point in time, you would know that Rome, as a country, as an empire, as a place, was jacked up, was messed up, would allow anything, would do anything. It was an insane place. And so Paul, here he is, a man who comes from a buckwild past. He used to be known as Saul, and he used to murder people. He used to say what he wants and do what he wants and get away with it. He was that kind of guy, and he's right into a place that's culture. Well, say what you want, do what you want, sleep with who you want, go where you want, do anything you want to do as long as you pay up to Caesar. And then if you don't, we're going to put you in there with some lions, we're going to invite a couple hundred thousand spectators, and we're just going to watch you pay penance for not getting taxes. Wild. So Paul, he's identifying with them. Paul, he's saying, I get it. I get it. If anybody can tell you that I understand, that I come from a place where it is hard to get past my past. It is hard to leave my history in the history. It is hard to leave it all behind because I was doing these things for so long. I was raised in such a way for so long and you guys were born into a culture that just allowed anything and now you're trying to be led by Jesus. You're trying to follow Jesus and you have the hardest time remaining on track with Jesus because you've had a lot more time doing what you want than what God says is best for your life. And I believe that's all of us. Because maybe you didn't grow up the way that I grew up, which is hell. But we all grew up, whether it was in a good place or a bad place, is that whole nurture versus nature thing. Some of us, we were nurtured well. Some of us, we were nurtured very unwell. Some of us, we had an awesome upbringing. Some of us, we had an abusive upbringing. But all of us, no matter where we come from, what has shaped us as people up into this point of our life of following Jesus, we were raised up and we were brought up and we were trained up by imperfect people. Some of them Christian and trying to raise you right and be awesome. Some of them Christian, legalistic and wild. Some of them complete atheist, agnostic, wherever they fall. Maybe they haven't even thought about God ever. 
maybe they had bad self-perception of self and you were abused or taken advantage of or so many other terrible things and I'm so very sorry that you had to experience much like myself. But Paul, he's writing to a people like you and me that no matter how well done anything may have been tried to been set up or how terribly it was just neglected and wasn't set up well, we all are coming from a place that is not God's best for our life, previously separated from God, and now we're trying to live this thing out. And so Paul, he commiserates. Paul just says, I get it. I get it. I used to lie all of the time. I know it's hard to stop that. I know now you're having a hard time that you had a revelation. You met this Jesus. We put this church in Rome and you used to sleep around or you used to sleep with your boyfriend all the time or whatever it is. And, and now you're just having a hard time because what you want to do is be celibate and put God first in the middle of it and then celebrate later on when you get married by doing the hippie dippy. It's going to be awesome. And you're trying to do that. But what you want to do, you don't do. And what you do do, you don't want to do. I feel the same. I'm having a hard time realizing that I can't just talk to people the way that I used to. I can't preach like I used to threaten Christians. I have to change my vocabulary. I have to change my demeanor. Paul will later go on to say that I must become all things to all men so that some might be saved. Paul understood this better than anybody. He's saying, I get it. It's hard. You're trying to fight this war on the inside of you. World War Me, you got these thoughts that you don't want to have, but you can't help but have them. You're battling depression, and what you want to do is sing praise, but what you do do is put on a music or a, a movie or something that you think will make you feel better, but oddly enough, because you're depressed, you drift towards something depressing to listen right. to, to commiserate right. with how you feel. Yeah. What you don't want to do, you do do. But you, what you want to do, you don't do. Right. And Paul's saying, I get it. And I think this is all of us because of how we have been brought up in this life. Some of us, our biggest battles are, are generational curses, things that were passed down through, through generation, generation in your family. I want you to know today that if you've ever had fear of generational curses, if your father was an alcoholic and his dad was an alcoholic and his dad was an alcoholic and the other dad used to steal uh, alcohol on prohibition to be an alcoholic, you, once you are beneath the blood of Jesus, are no longer allowed to be an alcoholic. Yeah. Why? Because the blood of Jesus breaks every single generational right. curse. Yeah. There is no chain thicker than the blood. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Yeah. So Paul, he says, what a miserable person I am. Has anybody else been there? Yeah. Like for me, when I sin still as an almost 30-year-old man, as a guy who's been in ministry full-time since he was 17, as somebody who met Jesus at 16 and got involved in the church, I was raised in hell, but I found a father who would never treat me the way mine did, and I ran with this thing with God, and still, almost 20 years later, 15 years later, whatever it is, I'm not that old, praise God. <laughs> whatever it is, I still have those areas where I'm going, why did I do that again? Right. Why did I do that again? No joke, I had a guy on my team this week come up to me at request to have a meeting. He's amazing, he's a trusted friend, I love him to death. His name is Zach Kramer and he's incredible. And because he is one of the guys on my staff and he's one of my trusted people and he has an ear to the Holy Spirit and it's been proven, he sat down with me and said, bro, you're amazing. And I was like, thank you. But he goes, this is one area. If you are gonna steward church to the next level, if you're gonna steward your marriage to the next level, if you're going to be the father that you need to be, if you're going to be the pastor that you need to be, if you're going to be the pastor that we need you to be, there's this one area that I'm going, but I've been working on it! <laughs> Why did you notice? Dang it. <laughs> and much like Paul, it's like, what a miserable person I am. What a miserable person I am. I don't get it. I don't, I'm trying so hard 
to take things serious and not make dumb jokes and to control my mouth of a communicator. My mouth is what I do. And he's like, you got to tighten it up. Not that I was cussing or anything, by the way. It was, it was maybe just being stupid, saying silly things that I should say. Paul says, what a miserable person I am. I think we've all been there. When we're low, when we're in the depths, when we, because once you're a Christian, you are fully aware of your sin more than you were when you were asleep. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Like once you come alive in Christ, you are called to be dead to sin. And now you're dead to sin. You are more aware of your sin so that you know what you are trying to combat. You understand the war on the inside of you that's going on. World war me. You understand that. And so Paul, he's telling the Romans, this is it. I identify with you because we're saved, we're alive, we're awake. And now we know what it looks like. And much like the person who struggles with the bottle, or the person who struggles with lying, or the person who struggles with adultery, or the person who maybe has prejudice in their heart, what we do do, we don't want to Is there an answer? Is there a cure? And I wish some Christians today would just get this revelation this morning that when we're going into temptation, when we're going into a battle, when the war starts raging on the inside of you and the waves start going, I wish we would take up a posture. We wish we would prepare our hearts for heaven's rain to come down and just say, thank God the answer is Jesus. The answer is not try harder, be better. The answer is not continue to put these things in place so you don't fail. The answer is not just run away as far away from sin as you possibly can. Those things are good, but the only answer, the only cure, the only surefire way to uproot those areas in our lives that run rampant on us is Jesus. Amen. I love Jesus. Some of us, we've been so trapped in this thing, this war on the inside of us. We've talked a lot about different wars this whole time. And we've talked about a lot of different things. But, but we have not sat down yet and just gone, there are things on the inside of me that cannot stay, that cannot remain. If I'm to do this thing, if I'm to be the Christian I'm supposed to be, if I'm supposed to be and do everything God has called me to be and do, then I've got some things in my heart that is keeping me from walking through that narrow gate because the wide one is better fit for me at the moment. I need you, Jesus! So many of us, we think time is going to be the answer to our sin. There is no amount of time that will make you sin less if Jesus is not a part of the equation. Amen? Yeah, yeah. A lot of us, we think counseling and therapy is, is, is what we need to get over this. Now, pause. We are a church. Therapy is awesome. Counseling, we encourage it. But if Jesus is not part of the equation, that is simply, we say it all the time, so behavior modification that can never turn to complete soul transformation. If Jesus isn't in it, victory isn't imminent. Oh, I'm going to say it again. If Jesus isn't in it, victory isn't imminent. Come on, somebody. Jesus isn't in it. Victory isn't imminent. This is so often us. I just believe. Can I just preach about the goodness of Jesus for a minute? Oh, yeah. I just, oh, who loves Jesus in this place? Yeah. Yeah. I just believe that all of us, we are called, when we start following Jesus, right? We say, you, every time, then it's over, you just made the single best decision you could ever make for your life. And I agree with that statement 100%. There is a new future that is available to you. A new future is ahead of you. But your past is still behind you. So often we find ourselves in this place where we are more prone to our past even though we have a new future opportunity. We are more prone to our past when we have a new future presented to us. We are more prone to our past when we have been made available, when we've been given the armor of God. Paul tells us in Colossians to put on a new creation, our new nature, amen. But so often, God, we're just stuck in the ruts. We're spinning our wheels. We are in a car and we're trying to head towards our new future but we keep looking in the rear view and then we stall out and then we get killed in a car wreck. 
simply because we were too convinced of our past as about us more than the future that's been presented ahead of us. Yeah. But Jesus, friends, can I tell you what brings stillness to the battlefield on the inside of you? Jesus. Yeah. Can I tell you what brings peace to your raging heart? Jesus. Yeah. Can I tell you what reconciles the racism on the inside of us? Jesus. Yeah. Can I tell you what cuts through the political jargon on the inside of us? Jesus. Yeah. Can I tell you what brings peace to your home? Jesus. Can I tell you what gives you a hope and a future? Jesus. So often we want a Genesis. We want a new beginning. But we don't take him up on it because we don't believe that Jesus, like Paul says, is the answer. If you want a Genesis, his name is Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Take it one step further. If you want a revelation, his name is Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. If you want a beginning, middle, and ending, Malachi is Jesus. If you want a life that's free, his name is Jesus. Now you can call me. You can call me. You can call me brave or you can call me dumb. You can call me stupid or you can call me safe. But I actually believe, I actually am fully convinced and completely persuaded this morning that our God is who He says He is. Yeah. That He can do what He says He can do. Yeah. That if He has says He has made victory available to you, then by God on that cross, victory is available to you. If freedom is, is something He says that He's in, then freedom is available to you. Healing! It's a big one for us. It's a big one for us. In case you're concerned, don't worry. We are not obsessed with the miracles, but rather the miracle maker. Yes. Yes. And the byproduct of being obsessed and chasing after the miracle worker is miracle. That's right. That's right. But I'm completely persuaded this morning that you can actually live a free life. I am completely, I am mad about this. I am fallen out of my tree insane about this, okay? I absolutely believe that we as Christians, we are not doomed to a life where we just sing, wake up, sing, repeat, and someday we'll arrive in heaven and it will be complete. I'm not convinced of that. I believe the cross speaks a greater word than that. I believe today, as a Christian, you have got the right. You have got the authority. Jesus himself said, greater works will you do, Becca. Greater works will you do, Lexi. Greater works will you do, Sydney. Greater works, and this ladies, greater works will you do than even I. Because it's better that I go, Jesus says, that the Holy Spirit may come. Amen. Greater works. we got to hold on to that. Why? Because I believe we have the right to reject sickness. I believe we have the right to tell darkness it has to flee. I believe we have the right to tell death to go back to hell where it came from. I believe this morning that we are called to a higher purpose, that we are called, no, 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 so many of us want to say the hospital is a place for broken people. No, 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 friends. You are the hospital for the broken people. Yeah, Amen. Yeah, yeah. That's good. Jesus is the answer. Oh, what a miserable person am I. Thank God. Thank God there's Jesus. Yeah. Thank God there's Jesus. Some of us today, I believe the reason we have not progressed in some areas. I believe the reason that you are still not free from certain things, that you just keep going. Why do I keep going back to this Lord? And we're, we're saying Lord, and we're meeting with Him, and we're in the Bible. We're trying to do all these things. But I wonder this morning, are we fully convinced and completely persuaded that Jesus is the answer? There is no other answer. Jesus plus nothing gives you victory. Jesus plus nothing gives you victory. He is the end all, be all, all it is. If the answer is Jesus, will forever be Jesus. And ain't no other answer going to top Jesus. Amen? Amen. That's who He is. Friends, we're, some of us are getting so stuck in this. Oh, what a miserable person am I. No. No, the answer is Jesus. He speaks a greater word over your lives. I believe that if you deal with shame, with guilt, with condemnation, if you deal with condemnation today over your past or what you still get wrapped up in, can I tell you the answer is Jesus? Yeah. If you have shame over your life because of the decisions that you've made, the answer is Jesus. Yeah. If you got guilt in your life, I'm not talking about repentance. We get that confused all the time. We should be repentant of things, which just means simply, ah, oh, 
yeah, not great, not bad, Jesus. I'm going to go this way now, follow you. That's it, that's repentance, okay? But we get stuck in our head and we're going, oh, i got to be guilty, going like this. No, no, no. He says he lifts the head of the weary. Yeah. yeah. Don't repent with your head down. Repent with your head up. That's your future. Yeah. With shame and guilt and condemnation on the inside of you. Those come from the father of lies. Those come from the serpent with a split tongue and he comes from hell. So you can tell shame, guilt, and condemnation that they can go back to hell from which they came and that is where they shall remain in Jesus' name. Yeah. Yeah. There are no chains on me. Yeah. Sometimes I rap. <laughs> Sometimes. Okay. It's rare that it's good though. Rare that it's good. According to my wife. But maybe you're in that place. Maybe you're in that place today. Or you just, you can't even, you can't even get your head around this. Maybe you're in that place where you've just been like, no, 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 no. I, I identify far more with what Paul just said until he got to the answer and Jesus is the answer. Because I feel like right now, I don't have any answers. I'm handcuffed to the same tree I've been stuck at. I just feel like I've been left for dead in the wilderness to wallow in my sin, to wallow in my shame. And you don't know what I've done, Pastor. You're right. I don't know what you've done. But I know what Christ did for you. And I know what he gave you. And I know what he went to the cross for you to have and to receive. And I'm not going to allow you on my watch. On my watch as the shepherd of this house to die in sin, to sit in shame, to live in condemnation. Not today. That is not what Jesus taking over people's lives is supposed to look like. We came for freedom in Grand Rapids. Yeah. Not on my watch. I wish somebody would just say, not on my watch. No. Oh, come on. I believe he has set you free. When he set you apart, he set you free. Amen. But what do you do? What do you do if you're in that place? Because I, I love with you. I love with you. I got so many days where I entertain those thoughts, where I entertain my past, where I entertain what I've been and where I've been and what I've done. And I entertain that all the time. I don't have this now. I'm perfect, but I believe, I believe that Jesus paid a price so we can get there. I don't believe in. I don't believe that that is your current place to be and what a miserable person am I. Yeah. Can I tell you what Paul said next? Yeah. Do you want to hear the next verse? Yeah. Yeah. So first of all, that's how he ends, chapter 7. Great. You're awesome, Paul. But he picks back up in Romans 8 in 1 through 6. He says this, are you ready? Yes. Are you ready? So now... Next verse, come on. Now, there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. Oh, what a miserable tonight. I just feel like I'm a slave to sin. Verse 8, or chapter 8. So now, there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. And the church said, Amen. Amen. And because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. The law of Moses was unable to save us because of the weakness of our sinful nature. So God did. Somebody say, he did it. He did it. So God did what the law could not do. He sent his own son in a body like the bodies we sinners had. In that body, God declared an end to sin. In that body, he declared an end to sin to sin's control over us by giving his son as a sacrifice for our sins. He did this so that the just requirement of the law would be fully satisfied for us who no longer follow our sinful nature, but instead follow the spirit. Those who are dominated by the sinful nature, there's that word again, dominated. Who's, who's sick and tired of being dominated today? Oh, sick and tired. Come on, somebody. Sinful nature, but instead follow the Spirit. Those who are dominated by the sinful nature about things that please the Spirit. So let your sinful nature control your mind. Leads right. So letting your sinful nature control your mind that leads to death. But letting the Spirit control your minds that leads to life and peace. Praise, break. Yeah. 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 Paul says, right. 
from the jump. He goes, from what a miserable person I am, the answer is Jesus, but sometimes I still feel a slave to my sinful nature. And then he goes, there is zero, approximately zero. This is not pie. This is not where it just goes on forever and there's like portions of shame or portions of condemnation. No, this is approximately across all languages, all math. There is no multiplication, division, or trigonometry that can change this. He says there is zero. Zip, zilch, nada. Condemnation for those that are now in Christ Jesus. He says it's done. He says he's freed you. He says he went to the cross to speak a greater word over you. That sinful nature, you are now, you are now dead to that in your sin. You are dead to the right to feel condemnation. You are dead to the right to feel shameful. You are dead to the right to feel to feel to feel guilty. If you feel like you have got a war raging on the inside of you, Christ has pronounced, I rescued you from it. Come on. Yeah. I've rescued you from it. I have freed you from it. You no longer have to bow to that thing. It just happens to be that you're more prone to bowing than you are to standing. Yeah. He's freed you. There's no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. Paul has this commiserating moment. I feel you. I've been there. Oh, I'm there right now. Actually, I just... You know, I got angry, I punched Silas, and then we had him in jail. Great. Again, I understand, I commiserate with you, but I don't want to do what you do. But there is an answer, and his name is Jesus. No matter whether you feel wrapped up in it or not, his name is Jesus. He has freed you. In fact, because I don't even know, this stuff isn't actually split up in the original letters. This is just so that we can understand it better. Yeah. Give us sections. They are written in pieces like this. It's all one big thing. In the next sentence, he says, Therefore, there is no condemnation. Those feelings that you're feeling wrong, those things that you're trying to get past, those dumb things that you keep going back to and you're doing again, that girl you keep running back to, that bottle you keep thinking is going to be the answer to your anxiety, all of these things you will not find at the bottle or the bottom of a bottle of wine, but you will find it when you allow God to give you new wine. Right. And then he says this. And Paul says, Those who are dominated by sinful nature think about sinful things. But those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about things that please the Spirit. Paul declares, he goes, what God sent in his mortal body, he did this for you already. There's no reason for you to keep going back to this thing. Your sin, your nature, who you are, what you were born into, the atmosphere, the nature of what you came up in, your upbringing, all of these things play a factor in the battles you keep going back to. He says you keep growing in sin because you keep feeding sin. He says you keep growing back to your sinful nature because you keep feeding your sinful nature. And he's saying the battle is going to happen daily because it's going to tempt you into it, the more that you keep going back to Temptation Island, the more battles you will fight. If he can get to tempt you, and the more battles you keep going back for, the more you keep going back to that same thing, the more your resolve will weaken, the more your condemnation will grow, the more the shame that holds over your head from the devil will grow, the more you will think you are worthless and you don't, you are purpose. You, the more you do that, he will say these things about you and you will think, all I am is a dirty, filthy heathen. This is all I'll ever be. And God, or Paul rather, right in this moment, he's saying, quit going back to battle. The world war that's within you, Jesus, he's already won it. Yeah. You don't have to. He is the silence and the peace, and he is Jehovah Nisi, the Lord, your banner. When you go in the battle, he's already won, including the battle that is on the inside of you. So Paul says, man, if you're struggling with your sinful nature, people who struggle with their sinful nature are the ones who keep 
feeding their sinful nature. Yeah. 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 That's good. Those who keep battling their sinful nature are the ones that keep feeding their sinful nature. Right. Yeah. The ones who keep growing, let's go with this one, the ones who keep getting dominated by their sinful nature are the ones that are stewarding their sinful yeah. nature. Yeah. I think if we're in this place this morning, we want to win the battle from the inside yeah. of us. Yeah. If we want to win the world war of me, if we want to do that, I think some of us, we need to start evaluating what it is that we've been feeding on. Yes. Yes. We need to start evaluating what it is that we've been ingesting. We need to start evaluating where we are at and what leads to us putting that in our body or in front of our eyes. Like for the young guys in here this morning, man, if you struggle with pornography, maybe you need to watch what we put for your eyes. This is very practical. We'll get back to the fun stuff in a second. But maybe what God says is best for your life is not watching Cardi B videos. Yeah. It's true. Just saying. It's true. Yeah. It Love Cardi. Pray for Cardi. Heaven would be better if Cardi was on her side. I don't know that she is. I haven't met her. So we love her. It's going to be awesome. Pray for Cardi. Love it. But maybe for you, there's no shame on Cardi. There's no shame on her. People who don't know are just going to do what they've always done. Yeah. No shame there. Let's pray for Cardi. Let's meet her. Let's find her. But some of us, if we keep battling our sinful nature, there needs to be an evaluation that takes place. Yeah. There needs to be something that happens where we get with some people in our lives and go, dude, this is just out of control. It just keeps growing. And you know, like, I love God's word. Just like Paul says, he goes, I love the word of God. I love the word of God. I want to do what the word of God says to do. I want to see and be all that the word of God says that I can see and be. I want to heal people. I want to cast out demons. I want to go further. I want to start a revival in Grand Rapids. I want to start a revival at my gym. I want to start a revival at all of these places. But I'm too busy and I'm too preoccupied with World War Me right now. And I need this to end. Some of us, can I tell you this morning, there are too many battles that God needs you to fight for your family for you to be busy fighting battles within yourself. Yeah. Some of you, God has got battles for you to fight and to win at your workplace, but you are way too busy battling yourself. Some of you, you have got an area that God has just given you as a sphere of influence, whether it's at your gym, your friend group, your college campus, whatever it is. There are some battles that God has put you there for you to win, but you've been too busy battling yourself. So what are you doing? What are you taking? What are you putting before your eyes? That you're stewarding your sinful nature instead of dominating your sinful nature. Right. So what do we do? Paul says this. I love this. There's a huge difference here, and I don't think Christians get it. I don't think we do. I think we miss this entirely. I think we'll read this portion of Scripture, and you will hear, oh, you just got to be better. Oh, you just got to do better. You just got to put up some more barriers. And you just got to do this. You know what? You should shake your head, go to sleep, become a monk. That's what you got to do. Okay? Right now, you don't need to be all things to all people. You need to be celibate. And so shave your head, go to sleep, and leave the women alone. Like, that's what we start thinking. We start going, there is nothing. I'm a slave to my sin, so all there is is the avoidance of sin. And that's simply not true. Right. This is where we get into trouble. Because we will hear a message like this and you will feel condemnation. You will think that you need to do more. That's not what I'm telling you to do. Christians, we have the answers. We know what the Bible tells us to do. Resist the devil. He shall flee from you. Like, we get it. There's a way to win this, okay? In the natural, what can we talk about the supernatural? Yes. Yeah. Because here is what Paul says, and this is a major key. So we say, major key! Major key! It's a major key because this verse, bring it back. He says, those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about the sinful things. But those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about the things that please the Spirit. Now here we go. We think as Christians, this just means, all right, I'm in church, cool. Uh, don't sleep with my boyfriend. Okay, got it. Uh, get a roommate that's going to hold me accountable. Okay, got it. Uh, don't go to those bars because I'm weak on the inside. Got it. Hey, don't listen to this kind of music because uh, I deal with depression and seasonal depression. We're going to fall and it's getting cold and all I want to do is listen to my chemical romance and it's just not great. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, sorry. I'm old. I don't know what music is happening these days. I like hip hop or worship. So, excuse me. But I want to listen to all these things. I'm just, I'm so single. And I'm alone, and I have depression and identity issues, so uh, don't listen to Frank Ocean. Got it! I've been thinking about you. No! Come on, Jesus, I've been thinking about you. 
Jesus. <laughs> we think that's what we have to do. But this is where we get it wrong. Because that is only half the equation. That is only half the equation. Those things are good and those are natural. But there's something that you need to do in the supernatural too. Because here's the deal. We don't just avoid sin. We have to overcome sin. We don't just avoid sin. We have to defeat sin. We don't just overcome our sinful nature. We have to dead our sinful nature in the grave. Okay? We have got to fight this thing. There's a reason Paul said to Timothy, fight the good fight of faith. That wasn't an accident. Fighting is what he meant. Yeah. And so in this moment, Paul says this. Those who are dominated by sinful nature, they think about sinful things still, okay? Let's not be thinking about sinful things. Got to check one. And then Paul flips it to the supernatural because it's what Christ went to the cross for. And he goes, but those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about things that please the Spirit. Mm -hmm. If you're going to starve your sin, you need to replace it with the Spirit. That's right. If you're going to starve your sin, you need to replace it with the Spirit. If you're going to defeat your sin, you need to replace it with the Spirit. If you are going to put that thing in its place, then something else has to come in. Yeah. Yeah. If you are going to try and kick the alcoholism spirit in your life, boom, you need to replace it with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. If you're going to try and get past the anger you have in your life, boom, you got to replace it yeah. with the fruit of the Spirit. Yeah. Paul says it's not enough to avoid sin to be made holy. You've got to replace sin with the Holy Spirit. You want to be controlled by the Holy Spirit instead of your flesh? You want to be controlled by the Holy Spirit instead of sexual desires? You want to be controlled by the Holy Spirit instead of a bottle of Captain Morgan? You've got to replace it with the Holy Spirit. Oh, When you only attempt to starve your sin, you are only completing half of the equation. Right. You are only walking in half of what Jesus went to the cross for you to have. Jesus didn't go to the cross for you to be free of sin at the end. He came for you to be free of sin now. Yeah. I actually believe this is possible. I don't accept anything less. I see this in the scripture and I've seen it in other people's lives. And I'm not saying people are walking around like I'm perfect and walking on water now through Jesus. I'm not saying that. I'm saying you can reject sickness. You can reject sin. You can reject your body when it gives you these ideas that are not from you but they are from hell. You can reject these things. You can claim to meaning over these things, and you can be controlled by the Holy Spirit when you start thinking on things that please the Holy Spirit. I want to put my hands around her neck. You don't know what she did to me. That's about throw her. But instead, I'm going to take the low road. I'm going to give love. And then I'm going to go home and not put my hands on her. My friends neck who offended me, but I'm going to put them in my Savior's hand in my living room and I'm going to worship my way through this yeah. anger. Because yeah. i got a war on the inside of me right now. I'm so upset and I'm so angry and I just rage on the inside of me and I can do something with these hands in the natural that I can never take back, but instead I am going to lift them up in the supernatural and I'm going to take hold of what Christ went to the cross for me to have. Half the equation equals half the victory. Half the equation equals partial freedom. Half the victory equals walking in partial salvation. It's a saved life then as much as it is a saved life now. It's free of sickness then as much as it's free of sickness now. It's, it's much free of adultery, of bitterness, of racism, of bigotry. All these things are happening on the inside of us, man. I grew up, my dad was abusive. At first, I put my hand on my kid. I don't know what I was thinking. I don't want to do it, but I did it, and I just don't know how to get past my programming. Half the equation equals half the liberation. You're not called to repeat the program. You're called to have a purpose. Yeah. It all starts with the Holy Spirit. Once you have Jesus, there's another level to this thing. He didn't go to the cross for you to continue to get beat down, going through the same motions. He didn't go to the cross for you to lose the world war on the inside of you. He didn't go to the cross for you to be defeated. 
He went to the cross so that you can have victory. He went to the cross so that you can have healing. He went to the cross so that you can have prosperity. He went to the cross so that you can have hope. Yeah. Our Bible tells us we have hope against hope. We don't have hope against cancer. We don't have hope against depression. We don't have hope against suicidal thoughts. No, we have hope against hope. Yeah. But we've got to replace some things with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And that's what I want to do this morning. If you would just stand up with me. If you would stand up with me. about to go with you. One last song.
knowing that He is for you and repeating that over and over, that He is for you. Um, can we just take a second and just make as much noise as possible for those people that just dedicated their life to Jesus and opened themselves up to the Lord? about